my challenge of making at least three or four new connections, I have a very strong feeling that you've already started on that, so I don't need to worry. Brilliant. Well, welcome back. Um, now, um, we go into a session where, in half an hour's time, I hope the technology will allow this, we will be beaming Helen Bevan from her office in Coventry to have a conversation with us about, about change. So, I'm in that very scary position. I think it's a bit like working with children and animals, if you're an actress, um, that you hope it's all going to work really well. If not, I will learn to improvise. Anyway, what we're going to do now is go back to um, the beginning of the conversation we had about sharing the exciting and celebrating some of the journeys people are on and why we're here. Now, while you've all been at coffee, I think so far we've got four people who volunteered, or they may have been volunteered, um, I couldn't comment, um, to share a very quick three-minute celebration of what, who they are, why they're here, and what they really, really want to see different. Now, the first person we've got is a gentleman called Darren Jones from CLCH. Darren in the room? Great. Darren's right at the back. Three minutes to tell a story. So, Darren. Okay. okay, my name is Darren Jones. I'm one of the associate directors of quality within Central London Community Healthcare NHS Trust. Um, our story is the fact that we've started to host pre reg students as their primary host for their pre reg student placements. So, instead of them historically being based in the hospital and hosted by the Acute Trust, they're being hosted by a community provider for the first time. It's a small cohort of students because we've got to make sure we get it right. Um, we were talking about how important you know, it is developing our future workforce and obviously trying to target our pre-reg students is very important for us as community providers because they are our future workforce. And um, I remember when I first went into, into nursing and I thought about doing district nursing, I was told, you don't want to do that. That's all they do is talk about Marks and Spencer sandwiches and they're all married to GPs which obviously was not a good um, advert to go into community nursing, but I did. And what we're doing with the pre-reg students is trying to expose them to all the different fields within the community, including eventually practice nursing, just to show students that there is a career pathway in community services. And, you know, that's what we're striving to do by hosting them in the first instance. So that's some of the work that we're doing with, in partnership with King's College University. Thank you very, very much. And just while you've got a minute on that, what have been the, the, the biggest hurdles you've had to face as an organisation, as a team, to make this work? Um, I think it's actually trying to dispel the myths that if you are being hosted as a student in the community, you are still getting a good standard of pre-reg education. Some of our students, their colleagues, have said, well, will that mean at the end you're still a nurse at the end of it? And obviously that's things that we're having to work on um, to make sure that we are dispelling those myths. I think also given the confidence that, you know, through the NMC registration process that we are, you know, we're not going to, you know, um, compromise education in any way through this process. Um, our students are still getting their, you know, acute medicine, surgery, all the other specialist nursing fields that they're, you know, they're exposed to in their general training. So I think dispelling the myths that we can do this and this can be done you know, in a very safe, effective way is obviously a challenge, but we are getting there. Good. Thank you very, very much for sharing that. Right, can I move on to Alison Pisani from Southwark CCG? There we go, right at the front. Um, my name is Alison Pisani. I'm a background as a nurse practitioner, practice nurse, nurse practitioner. Um, I'm the GP nurse lead for Southwark CCG. Um, and we have a vision really based on Amy David's piece of work that she did in Lewisham about standardising the journey of a patient from the acute going through to um, primary care. Um, they're, they're, at the moment, it's very bitty and district nurses and pract practice nurses don't work together, but they are seeing the same patient. So in Southwark CCG now, we're looking, and I'm working with SEPTA, is to look at district nurses coming in to sit in with the practice nurses, practice nurses going out with the district nurses. So we begin to start seeing and, and respecting, as I think there was a good word there earlier on about respecting each other's roles and listening and, and watching. So it was very quick. 
and I talk for hours normally. And if you were to um, uh, talk to some of your patients about their different experiences as a result of how you're working now, what would, what would be the biggest difference they're seeing? Well, I think, I think it's actually, um, at the moment, well, until last year, practice nurses didn't go and visit in the homes. We are doing a big piece of work with South Slick um, and integrated care. And practice nurses are now going out. And I think that's what the patient's like. They want, they want continuity. They want to get to know. And district nurses uh, might be visiting these patients but not seeing the whole picture. So actually, why don't they all have the same training and the same vision and the same views? Because we are doing the same work. So that's a very good challenge to everyone is that do, how do we kind of overcome this thing about the two bits of the workforce we're talking about and actually how do we create it as one? Right. Writing here, Paula Marsden from Lambeth CCG. Thank you. Our model is trying to look at developing a career pathway into, into practice nursing and primary care nursing. And so we've got a small team, a team of five who work a small number of hours each, and we all still practice clinically, which I think you know, gives our colleagues some belief in us. And um, we've got one person responsible for getting a ment mentors um, into every single practice so that we can deal with mentoring and training. Um, we've got Louise over there who's responsible for liaising with the universities to get student nurses through primary care because at the moment there's no mandatory placements or anything like that and so, so student nurses don't get to understand you know, the, the wealth of job opportunities and um, uh, job satisfaction to be had in primary care nursing. Um, somebody else is dealing with um, the education, the ongoing education of practice nurses and making sure that we have regular nurse fora with a... Um, a clinical element and a networking element um, and I'm looking at um, healthcare assistants and you know they're ever increasing workforce in primary care and as anybody who's worked in primary care knows that the regulation in primary care is limited and so we're trying to make sure that healthcare assistants get uh, properly trained and supervised and looked after you know it's basically looking after all of our colleagues so that we've got a good solid workforce to take forward um, all of us who are soon to retire or you know in the next 10 years really so that's what we're doing right i think we've got a fourth person brian clare a care and advocate who's sitting on table 15 great there we go lovely I'm here as a carer and an advocate for carers. Uh, two years ago, my mother, who was 96, was taken badly ill, and her life was saved by the National Health Service and has been saved again since then. And I'm very grateful for that, and I treasure the National Health Service, uh, and indeed local authority, adult social care, and GPs, and community nurses. But I have to say, my experience of them, once they've saved a life, is that they walk away. Uh, they, there is a malaise within the, across the sector, which is disgraceful. And one has to ask oneself, how did we get here? And carers, like myself, are the people who glue it all together, but were disrespected by the professionals too many times. And uh, I've, again, have been astonished to find so many carers who come up to me and say, when I'm being rather assertive, like I am now, um, how they agree with me and what I'm saying reflects their um, experience. So I, I've made it my mission to be a bit of a nuisance and I want significant change across the board. Uh, and I think that currently money is wasted because of the inefficiencies built into that malaise. And we need more empowerment of people to do their job and to integrate and I wonder where some of the managers are who are earning salaries but are running a system that appears to be broken. And just building <coughs> on the last speaker, uh, what I want is an app or apps which allow me to store all the data that I've acquired, two storage boxfuls of paperwork uh, uh, for caring for my mother, the people I need to contact urgently her medical needs, an explanation of what her medication is for, rather than just the name of it and the strength of it. Uh, we need help to care, and there's a, a, there's a tidal wave of older people coming, like myself, uh, and there need to be plans in place mm. to care for me, please, as well as my mother. Thank you right. very much. Thank you very much. 
I'm going to set all of us a challenge, and hopefully you'll help us to lead it. During today, we'll be making pledges about things that we want to do, and I think one of the pledges I will work with you on is how we involve carers much more strategically in the work we're doing across London, both within this and other work. So that's my first pledge of today, and we'll get together later and do that. But I expect other people to be thinking about how we are doing this um, in the conversations you have later and what you take back. So thank you very, very much. Um, Right, we've got a question mark. There's someone on table four. Uh, I don't know where table four is. Is someone... Uh, we found them. <laughs> Hello there. This is a bit of a, a bounce here, but anyway, I'll, I'll do my best, Caroline. Don't worry. <laughs> Introduce yourself to everyone else. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, hello there. Um, I'm Maggie Buckle. I'm currently the um, CCG nurse on the governing bodies of two London CCGs, one in Greenwich and, and, and in Tower Hamlets, where I've been for the last two years. Sorry? <laughs> Mic closer to mouth, OK. Is that better? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Did you get the first bit? Yes, OK, I thanks. Um, what I talked about on the table was um, how fortunate I felt for, over 40 years ago to have um, an integrated um, training, which resulted in um, district nursing, health visiting and general nursing qualifications. I think in the 70s we were very forward thinking and I think it's such a shame that those trainings um, across hospital and community for nurses are, now longer, are no longer available. However, what that gave me at that time was a sense of, of people in their own homes as opposed to in hospital beds. And I think one of the things we talk about now is around patients in the community, which is some sort of nebulous area. Um, but actually, they're at home in their own beds or hopefully in their, on their own sofas or in their, you know, just going about their lives. And um, <clears throat> I think we need to get a concept of, of what the community means now and, and having much... Um, more seamless approaches um, between the community and the acute. And um, <clears throat> um, one of the things that we're doing now in Tower Hamlets is re-procuring our community health services. And um, at the end of that procurement, we really hope to have a much more integrated approach um, between primary care, community nursing, and, um, and, the, and the hospital and mental health trust. So we're really hoping for a much more joined up um, philosophy around community health services. I've got Linda Alders down as table 12. Is that Linda Alders? Yes. yes. Um, hi, my name's Linda Alders. I'm nurse partner at, um, at the Bromley by Bow Health Partnership in Tower Hamlets. And um, there are three things that I wanted to um, talk about. The first was um, many of you will be aware of the Sur Save Our Surgeries campaign. Some of us in Tower Hamlets are um, very concerned about sustainability of general practice and we're aware that um, we are going to need to um, change our models of care. One of the things that we're looking at in our practice is shifting work sideways from GPs to ANPs to practice nurses to healthcare assistants. So I'm very interested in, in all the talk that's um, going on today about how we um, best teach our healthcare assistants to undertake tasks that are appropriate to them and um, facilitate our work as well. Um, the other thing is about um, integration in, with um, community nurses. One, one example that we've got is of our community nurses working with our practice nurses who are going out and visiting more, um, as in other areas, um, and working with GPs on, th on things like virtual or, or ward rounds in nursing homes. Um, also, um, we're, we're particularly interested in our practice. I work with the Bromley Babo Health Centre, who many of you might know, um, and we're very interested in, in the wider determinants of health. Lots of projects and what, uh, around um, improving people's expectations, thinking about um, housing, um, job and um, welfare and um, educational opportunities, but also using the resources of people who we call our patients and, and seeing how much, they can, how, how much they can contribute to the health economy, what they can do for us, what we can do for them. So very much working in partnership. Thank you very much. And I think there's a bit of a theme there. I think if we haven't got um, enough pieces of work going on across London around how community and, and practice nurses are working together and redesigning, I think we need to make that a real priority over the next six to nine months. I think there'll be some real good learning from that, which would be brilliant. 
Right, now, um, those are the only ones who've come forward voluntarily. Having seen it's not as scary as all that to stand up and tell your good news story or your challenge, would anyone like to, to share something that they're proud of that they think other people would like to hear about? I know there's a lot going on. It's uh, Trish Murphy from Croydon Health Services. I'd like to talk about IT, bane of everyone's life. Actually, sitting around the table and listening to people, we've all got the same problems. Yet we're all using different systems. We don't talk to the GPs in our, in our areas. We've got three systems going. The GPs have different systems. Surely it's now the time to have one system working across all the networks, working across all the um, different localities. Um, if, we, if we were all working together, it would make it seamless, it would make it easier. And actually, at the end of it, our people. Our information helps us to look after these patients. We need to, or people, we need to actually have one system. And in Croydon, we've been very lucky. We've just won a bid to um, go um, have digital pens, laptops. Um, but actually, we're struggling because we don't have one system. So I think it's a big thing if the NHS could go for one system that works across all areas. OK, thank you. Thank you. I thought Anne might want to say something, so we'll quickly go over to Anne, who's doing the information workshop this afternoon. Thank you. Um, hello there. Hi. I'm Anne Cooper. I'm the lead nurse for informatics at NHS England currently, and I've been working in informatics, which you might think is IT. It's not just IT, but it is that. And I just need to respond to what you're saying. I, I feel your pain. Um, I've been working in this area for a long, long time, and I absolutely feel your pain. But actually, I think what you're asking for might be the wrong thing. And what I want you all to think about is the importance of language and standards, that actually the system that you're using isn't necessarily the answer, but understanding that when you mean that there and you, that you mean the same thing over there is what we need to do. And I think collectively as a profession, we've not really grasped why we need to have common language and common standards relating to IT. And if we did that, it would take away quite a lot of the pain that you're describing because you would be able to move the information around in different ways that would make more sense. You know, it's a bit like when you order something from, um, say, you, you have Waitrose down here, don't you? We don't have Waitrose in the north. But if you order something from Waitrose, if you order a lime, you expect to get a citrus fruit that's small and green. You don't expect to get a green apple. So you can see how language is really important. In the background of the system at Waitrose, they know that lime I'm small, a small green citrus fruit and when they transfer that to the star the star knows what to pick and language in computer systems and standards is exactly the same thing we need to get our act together and to work out how we want to share information about the people that we care for we need to have very different conversations about technology and its use and start them much earlier in the design of our processes so it's not a solution it's actually a way we it's part of the care delivery process. But I do think we need to find ways um, of, of understanding this thing about the apples and the, and the limes if we're going to move on from this challenge that you are experiencing, definitely. Two people at the back. I'm a Darcy Fellow working with the Health Innovation Network, and so mine is in a response to the discussion about IT. One of the Health Innovation Network is an academic health science network, but one of the cross-cutting themes is um, London Connect, which is about connecting up different IT systems so that they can all talk to each other. So um, that's in South London. I'm sure there's similar ones in North London. But um, getting the feedback from where the problems are is the most important thing to making the changes. Hello, my name is Jenny Hurley and I'm the Practice Nurse Representative, Islington Clinical Commissioning Group. Dear friends and colleagues, I am not wishing by my next few statements to be negative. I'm trying to be realistic. And Caroline did ask about challenges. I wonder if practice nurses and nurse practitioners in general practice could just put their hands up, please. Thank you. What does that tell us? Is it about engagement of practice nurses? It might be partly that. Or is it because as a non-managed service, we have so much difficulty in so many areas negotiating with those who employ us to become enabled, enabled to, to come together and be inspired the way that we're going to be today? I don't have an answer to that. I wish I did. It keeps me awake at night. 
I personally don't have any problem negotiating with the uh, partners I work with, but I can understand that a lot of my colleagues do. And things like attendances at forums, which is extremely important, just doesn't happen in certain circumstances. So I think that is when we're looking at developing workforce and being inspired and innovative and all the things that we desperately want to be, we have to start thinking about some solution to that problem. Now, I think a, a very important point being raised, and it's something we're taking through the, trans, the um, Primary Care Transformation Board, is to make sure that, that um, nursing leadership and capacity to do the type of conversations we're doing here in lots of different scales across London need to happen. And it's a message that's going on, um, our people are listening, and, and realise that the, the future of primary and community care has is, is got to be... Um, by involving um, leaders from, from the existing system. So I think everyone agrees with you on that. Now we've got four minutes um, before Helen um, comes on the line. And I'm assuming she's all geared up to come on at, at 12 o'clock. Uh, we've got a comment at the front. Hello, my name's Heather Henry. I am an independent nurse focusing on asset-based community development and this is my innovation. I'm going to do it in the form of poetry and it's called Nursing Fathers Down the Last Chance Cafe and it's a true story. Uh, this time I have no medicine, just ears to hear their stories. Men don't talk about their feelings, how wrong can some folk be? We are down the last chance cafe. Six fathers meet as strangers, and I, the lone female, self-consciously sipping tea, wondering what will happen next. Suddenly a dad leans forward. Can I ask you guys something? I hold my breath just for a second. Have you ever thought about killing yourself? And that's it. The ties that bind them start to form. They emerge as friends and later leaders. Salford mothers are the stars of their children's show. Men are in the wings and sometimes thrown off stage. Women no longer need men, they sadly say, but children need their fathers and vice versa. How do you nurse a community of fathers? Meet on friendly, familiar terms. Buy them the best fry up in town. Let them learn to help each other. Understand their isolation. Invite them out and sing to the music. Be there, smiling, to stay their anxiety. Help them to make new connections. Let them be men. Focus on practical tasks. Tell them I need them to help each other. Sometimes it's best for men to fix themselves. The only thing this nurse injects is confidence. Thank you. I think a great example of the art of the possible and us all seeing the, actually the, big, the huge impact we can have um, within nursing if we uh, look at things slightly differently as well. So thank you and a, and a good advert to join Heather's workshop this afternoon.